where you cut the beam. Okay, the open end is where the the moment will bleed out. Let's go and look at um, the load diagram. The one thing that you have to remember about the load diagram: all positive force, which are forces acting up, goes above your datum line. The datum line is right there again. It is the darker black line. All forces from your shear force diagram that's acting up will go above. All forces acting down will go below the datum. And that's the only thing that you have to remember. If we were to look at our forces, we have the reactant AY acting up. I placed it above the datum. I have the UDL right there, uniformly distributed load right across that area it is a negative load it's acting down okay so I put it below my datum I have my point load right there and that's acting down below and then the final one by acting up I've replaced the actual labels of the reactants with the actual magnitude or the values of them so I don't need uh, to, to maintain the labels at this point okay that's all there is to a load diagram as you could see we went from the beam diagram to the free body diagram we needed the beam diagram the information from there to actually uh, draw the free body diagram then we went to the load diagram also we needed the information from the free body diagram to draw the load diagram okay let's go and construct our shear force diagram now and when we look at the shear force diagram fairly simple concept again we're gonna start from left going to the right side and we are gonna use the load diagram to construct it we have the load diagram here we're gonna start from left again we are increased by 1778 right at that point so I have a direct increase of 1778 kilonewtons between this point and this point right here, between the left side and the end of the UDL, I have a uniformly distributed load. So it's nice and even. It's going to be a straight line section. However, as you go from left to right, it's increasing. So it is going to be a decreasing situation here. Okay? It's going to, you're going to go from 17.78 kilonewton. You're going to reduce by... 14 kilonewton which is the total magnitude of that so you're going to go down to 3.78 i'm going to just take 14 away from 17.78 i'm going to get 3.78 right at that point okay from that point if i were to look at my load diagram from this point here there's no influence there is no influence until we get to the 12 kilonewton force so then on my shear force diagram that remains constant it remains a horizontal line and then when it gets to this point here it's influenced by the 12 kilonewton force which knocks it down to the negative side actually I'm gonna take 3.78 minus 12 I'm gonna get minus 8.222 okay so I've gone to the negative sign side of uh, the shear force diagram I'm not going to be influenced by any force in between here until I get to the end. So I stay constant. And then when I get to the end, I'm bumped up by 8.22. And this is important. We started at zero and we ended at zero. We could feel fairly confident that we have actually done whatever is done in here well. So we close, we have a check. Okay. It doesn't mean that uh, the moment diagram is going to check if the moment diagram does not close to zero that means that our reactants are in calculated incorrectly okay the next thing before we could go and construct our bending moment diagram we have to calculate the area under the shear force diagram and that area represent a moment okay when we look at force times distance that would be a moment in this first area here we have a trapezoid we have a base two parallel bases right there and we have a distance in between them so I'm going to calculate that area with the trapezoid formula 
17.78 plus 3.78 divided by 2, which is the average of the base, times the distance between them, the, the two bases, which is 2 meters. So you don't see the 2 meters very well here, but when you crunch the numbers, it equals to 2156. And that would be kilonewton meter. So you have gone from force times distance, kilonewton meter. So the area under the shear force diagram is a moment. And in this case, it's a positive moment. Let's go and look at the rectangular shape now. We have 3.78 right at that point. We have a distance of 3 meters. So 3.78 kilonewton times 3 meters will give you 1134 kilonewton meter. Again, a positive moment. Okay. When we look at the last rectangle that we have here, the last rectangle, it is a minus rectangle because we have a minus force and we have a distance of 4 so to calculate that will be minus 8.22 kilonewton times 4 meters will give you 32 or minus 32.88 kilonewton meter okay that's the number right in there so we have all the information that we need for constructing the bending moment diagram. The other thing that we have to remember, when we have rectangles on the shear force diagram, which we have one and two, those are straight line on the bending moment diagram. When we have triangles or trapezoid, which we do have here, that's going to be a curve. But there's different curves. If you have um, different orientation of the triangle, it represents a different type of curve. If you have negative area or a negative moment that's a different type of curve you have a concave and convex curve that happens with that and I'll show you a, a fairly easy way to remember these curves all right let's go and look at uh, the Kahn's bending moment bug you won't find this in any textbook okay the uh, gives it gives the shape of the curve for the bending moment diagram for triangles and trapezoids. So it gives the shape of the, the bending moment diagram. These are the shapes that I'm speaking about, these curves here for triangles and trapezoid. The shape of the shear force diagram tri for triangles and trapezoids are converted into curves on the bending moment diagram. So when we look at this, we have a diamond really, and it's uh, separated into four equal parts we have the upper part of the diamond are represented by areas of triangles and those are positive area the lower part of this is negative area as you could see for the positive areas we have here depending on the orientation of the area we have here a concave rising up okay it's rising for the other positive orientation, we have a convex rising up. Convex rising up. When we look at uh, the negative areas, for the first orientation that we have here, we have a convex falling. And for the next one, we have a concave falling. Okay? So these, fairly simple way to remember this when you are on evaluations and stuff like that and you need to remember the shape it's just a bug it's separated into four you start from the left hand side you have the whisker of the bug and you have the back leg of the bug okay fairly easy let's go and construct our bending moment diagram now I've placed the bug right at that location you don't have to do this on your work this is just for me to get the appropriate shape for this particular uh, trapezoid shape when I do the bending moment diagram. As you could see, we know that we're going to have a curve right in there. My triangle is positive, first of all, it's a positive moment, and I have an orientation where my right angle is right there. That is the shape that I'm looking for right there. So I know I have a convex rising 
a convex rising. How much is it going to rise from zero? The amount of the moment, right? So I'm going to put my moment right there. I'm going to draw a convex rising up to it. The next shape that comes into play happens to be a rectangle. And that, again, is a positive moment. It's a positive moment. It's 11.34 kilonewton meter. From my 2156, I'm going to rise again. And when I add those two numbers, I'm going to get 3278 kilonewton meter. Okay. From that point, I have a negative moment. And that negative moment happens to be exactly matching what my magnitude here is, which is positive. So I know I'm going to go back to zero, and because it's a rectangle, I am going to go in a straight line to zero. I could feel now confident that all my work that I've done previously is correct. Everything is uh, going very well. Let's go and pick out our V max and our M max. V max is the maximum shear force, and I'm going to round my final answer off to three significant digits. When I look at how to pick off my Vmax, it's the maximum deviation from my datum. Maximum deviation from my datum. Okay, whether it's positive, in this case it is positive, or negative. I'm going to record it as an absolute value number, 17.8 kilonewtons. Okay, again the same, same rules apply to the bending moment diagram. The maximum deviation. If this was happened to be and the minus sign or the minus side then I would just record it as a positive again and that maximum deviation you could see it right there 32.8 it becomes kilonewton meter okay this is all that I have for you and I hope that uh, it explains how to construct the shear force and bending moment diagram have fun with it bye bye